All right, all right, all right. You are now rocking with the best, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to another exciting, exhilarating episode of the Catch This Fade podcast. I am, of course, your host, KD Drummond. Find me on Twitter at KD Drummond NFL. And that is my man, Five Grand, the one and only Patrick No C Walker. Find him on Twitter at Voice of the Star. Say what's up to the people, Pat. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the latest episode of Catch This Fade. Uh, still under the weather myself, battling some COVID symptoms, uh, but I am coming out of the worst of it. So that is the good news. Uh, still don't necessarily have taste, still don't have full lung capacity, but I do have enough air in the lungs God gave me to be able to throw out the fades that need to be thrown out when it comes to the Cowboys, but also to be able to lay out the praise where it needs to be laid out. So Katie and myself, we're are going to get to it because the Cowboys, they have their hands, their feet, their stomach, their head, everything's full when it comes to trying to stop Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals on Monday Night Football. Indeed, it is going to be a serious problem. Kyler Murray, I believe, is 7-0 and in AT- AT&T Stadium. Um, Sorry, 6-0, and 6-0, and trying to be 7-0. and Five as a high school player, including three state championships, uh, one Big 12 championship he has won in AT&T Stadium. So basically, he's the favorite right now when it comes to this. Uh, it's a battle of Texas quarterbacks. We have uh, him, and then we have, I believe, Katie, Texas's own uh, Andy Dalton. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Is, is, is that correct. where he's from? Yep. So it's going to be a good old uh, Friday Night Lights battle on Monday night in, in Texas. And fans are excited about this. Um, If you know anything about the NFL right now, the mobile quarterback, the quarterback that can do something with both his legs and his arm is the wave. It's finally made its transition from the high school game to the college game to the pro to the professional game where players such as this ilk are really what you want under center. Uh, It's a very it's a prideful time for people that have believed for a long time that this was a way that the NFL needed to go that has seen these type of players basically get shunned and to listen to things like what uh, crazy ass Bill Polian said when he tried <laughs> to move Lamar Jackson to play a wide receiver. That is not a new sentiment. Bill he Polians is old school. And Charlie Casserly's. Of the yeah, world. exactly. The, these, these, um, I mean, and they, I'm not going to say they're, Dinosaurs, exactly, because they're not football idiots. They're they're football just smart. Dinosaurs. They're just dinosaurs in their way of thinking. And it's finally time. Dak Prescott is clearly one of those. Damn, I'm, I really wish this was the Dak Prescott versus Kyler Murray matchup. But we all know what happened in the game against the Giants. Dak Prescott uh, has had his surgery following the ankle break, uh, the compound fracture, and the dislocation. He has had successful surgery. And we're recording this on Thursday. Dak Prescott showed up at the facility today with the Cowboys. So when I tell you, we talked, we talked, that's what I was about to say. We talked about that in the show on Monday about whether or not he was going to be a part from this team and, um, you know, the dark places that he could possibly go in. Ezekiel Elliott referenced it today, and he was talking about the isolation of COVID and how it's important for them to make sure that they know that they're with him. So I love to see the fact that he showed up, and uh, by all accounts, he received the warmest of welcomes. It was actually uh, a great moment based on all the reports that we've seen about him being able to just say hi to the team and let them know that he's still with them in spirit and still behind them as they go forward on this season. And alluding to the previous episode on Monday, um, and I know you had uh, had a concern about that. And and three days later, four days later, it's exactly what I I believed it would be when it comes to Dak Prescott. He's not going to simply crawl into a shell uh, and clam up and and be a recluse, for lack of a better way to put it. He's he's most certainly going to figure out a way to be involved with this team going forward. So again, like I said on Monday, do not be surprised if you see Dak Prescott on the sideline going forward with his face mask on, with his crutches on, um, with a headset on helping Kellen Moore, helping Mike McCarthy, um, you know, lead Andy Dalton, uh, whether it be with pre-snap reads and helping him to read defenses. And this is not to say Andy Dalton does not know how to do these these things because he absolutely does. Uh, but when you're up against uh, your own defense in a lot of ways, because your defense can't seem to stop anyone, you're going to need as many um, of, of these extra assistances as you can possibly get because as a as an offense and Dak can attest to this you're going to have to play perfect football now Mm -hmm. now is that fair absolutely it's not fair to ask an offense to put up 35 to 40 points a game 
and not ever make a mistake. But that's the rea reality of the situation that Dalton is in. So being, as, you know, being that as it may, uh, Dak Prescott being on the sidelines, having that unique perspective to be able to apply to what Andy Dalton is going to see going forward. That's going to help this Cowboys offense, I believe, going forward. But Dak Prescott, you're not going to – it's not going to be a situation where you don't see him again uh, until – uh, next offseason when he returns to the facility for you know rehab and workouts and things like that. Dak Prescott isn't going anywhere whatsoever. Right. So, yeah, he was at the facility on Thursday. Uh, it's not going to be the last time he's at the facility. And, again, I predict that you will see him in AT&T Stadium on the sideline, much as Romo was uh, when Ro you know in the season that Romo was injured. So uh, I think that he's going to take that, inherit that kind of um, thought process, uh, from his time with Romo in that, hey, you know, you can suffer a season ending injury and you can tackle it one of two ways. You can say, woe is me and, you know, put your head down and then go about your rehab. Or you can get on that sideline and you can try to help your team win. And Dak Prescott has already proven that he's hyper competitive. He's a winner. He wants to do whatever it takes to help the team as a whole win. And, you know, putting on a headset is going to be one of those things. So however he can help them, he's going to. Yeah, I think I, I still have concerns uh, because that's just the kind of person I am about his mental well-being. Uh, first and foremost, because he's already admitted uh, that, you know, he's had some struggles or he had some struggles during the offseason. So I hope that everybody involved with the organization does what's necessary to make sure he doesn't fall in that dark place. Because, again, my main concern is the fact that he now has to admit that on the football field, he's mortal. He's never missed a game so far in his NFL career, 69 straight starts uh, to start his career. And the, the fact that he's no longer going to be out there, it's great that he showed up to the facility today. When he's on the sideline, even if he is on the sideline and he has to watch his guys go out there without him, that's going to hurt him. That's mm -hmm. going to be a gut punch for him, that he's not able to do what he's been doing for the last four plus years. So those are the type of things that I worry about. I think that you're absolutely correct that he is going to maintain his relationship with the club, with the players, with the coaching staff, with the front office, and be able to have those guys to lean on. <clears throat> Excuse me. I hope that it's enough to keep his spirits up during this trying time when he's not able to do what he has done the entirety of his uh, football career, not just as a professional, but back to Mississippi State. But I think it's also going to be uh, what's going to help him as far as his uh, his mental state going forward is as someone who who battles depression on a regular basis, and I say battle on a regular basis because you never defeat it. It's always right, about right. trying to get the win today. You win today, you win today, and then you worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. And then tomorrow you wake up and guess what? You win today. It's always yep. about winning today. For Dak Prescott, it's about remaining productive mentally yeah. Um, yeah. and not Good allowing point. his mind to become idle. And I say that uh, in the aspect of if Dak Prescott looks at this as an opportunity as devastating as it as it is to go through, if he looks at it as an opportunity to broaden his assessment and knowledge of the game, yeah, then it's going to become a, a challenge for him. So now there's a challenge set in front of him to say, "Hey, yes, you you've already proven you know how to play the game um, from the quarterback position. You've already proven you know how to you know read defenses and things of that nature while on the field and in the film room, but." Do you know how to do it from the sideline? Because right. from the sideline, see, now that's an angle that's unexplored for Dak Prescott exactly. as Very it is unexplored point. for most franchise quarterbacks because they're always, guess where, on the field, right? So from the sideline perspective, and this is something that Tony Romo spoke on. I was on. about to say that, yes. This is something that Tony Romo spoke on after a couple of his season-ending injuries saying, hey, uh, he was so upset at the time uh, with the injury and everything or whatever the injury may have been at the time, whether it be the you know fractures in his back, whether it been the uh, fractured clavicle, whatever the case may be, uh, he didn't realize exactly how how there was another level to this yep. mentally from a football acuity standpoint until he was on the, forced to be on the sideline with a headset forced to, you know, look into the play calls from the coach's perspective, look at how defenses are attacking certain play calls from a coach's perspective. So now we might be looking at a Dak Prescott who's coming back from yes. injury in 2021, not only as elite as he was physically, but mentally even more so because now he can break the 
game down from a coaching standpoint. So as long as Dak Prescott looks at it as an opportunity in that capacity, I think he will be just fine because he will then have that positive uh, challenge, that positive energy to kind of fuel him going forward. But if, to your concern, I believe that if he does not look at it as an opportunity, and all indications are that he will, but if for whatever reason he doesn't, that's when the concern should definitely take center, uh, center stage. Yeah, that is that is an excellent point. Excellent point about how Romo spoke about his ability to dissect things from the sideline when he was just watching to be in the coach's ear while they're talking about uh, what's happening on the field and dissecting what Dalton is able to do with the same group of players that he, that um, Prescott is going to have upon his return. So I think that's an excellent point to make. Um, the question is that that kind of dovetails into is what kind of product will Prescott be watching mm. when he's on the sideline? Where do the Cowboys go from here? A very – foundational question for not just the rest of this show, but for the rest of the season is, is the Cowboys championship window closed with Dak Prescott on the sideline? Because that in turn affects the way that you approach pretty much everything else about how the organization is run right now. The Cowboys can make the playoffs. That's without question. They can win the NFC East with Andy Dalton. That's without question. When it comes down they could time, win the to, NFC East with a circus monkey, pretty much. <laughs> Although I, I did warn that the Cowboys were making a terrible misstep by not separating themselves from the oh, Philadelphia absolutely Eagles. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. The the Eagles are right there, and now you see that things are everybody, not everybody's all good. right. Everybody's there. right there, but Even especially the, the Eagles. five New York Giants. Yeah, but right they're not there. good. They're, the the Giants may not win a game all season. The question is, can the Cowboys win a championship when they have to go through Seattle, the Rams again, Green Bay, some of these other teams that have championship pedigree through the early stages of the season? Could the Cowboys compete against those type of teams? If they can, then that opens up one path of moving forward over the next several weeks and over the rest of the season. If they can't, then that opens up another Pandora's box about how you're going to approach things. So let me turn that over to you, Pat, and let me ask you before I go down this uh, choose your own adventure. I don't know if you're old enough to remember those books. Remember the choose your own adventure books? Dude, who where you'd do you read? think I am? I, I, I mean, I'm just saying. Stop. I, 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 feel, I feel old I when I talk about book, that. I used to get them from the book fair. Remember the Scholastic listen, book fair? The Scholastic listen. book fair that you used to no. bring home, the little catalog. It was about yes. four pages back yes. and forth, and it was made of paper and you used to put it in front of your moms and to say, you know, hey, I want please, this book in this Please, book let me get book. these books. <laughs> please. please. Book. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah, so the Choose Your Own Adventure, I pose that question to you. Is the championship window closed for the Cowboys? No, it, it's not closed. Um, but, well, let me, let, me, let, me re, let me restate it. It's closed, but it's not locked. Okay. okay. And, and, okay. and the reason I say it's, it's closed is because Andy Dalton is, is a, a capable NFL starter in the regular season. Um, QB1B in the regular season. Uh, it's not your traditional backup. So, you know, this guy that has passed for more than 31,000 yards, mm-hmm. uh, you know, first five seasons in the league, uh, 50 wins, you know, double digit wins in four of those seasons, so forth and so on. This is a three time pro bowler. He can step in and he can get the job done. He can get you wins between now and December. Um, but with the uh, injection of Andy Dalton in the absence of Dak Prescott, it, it's not even arguable that you lose something. Of course. Um, not only do you lose, you know, the youth and athleticism of Dak Prescott, uh, but you you also you lost the leader of the team. So Andy Dalton is going to come in and he's going to, you know, step up and lead the team, but he's not the leader of the team. So you, you're missing the heart and soul of the team in Dak Prescott um, and you're missing some youth and athleticism in, in Dak Prescott. So you're not going to see, you know, RPOs with Andy Dalton. Right. right? Um, you're not going to see as many quarterback um, runs 
um, to gain two or three yards, three or four yards, because that's not Dalton's game. So, you know, for as much as the Cowboys don't need to overhaul their entire playbook for Andy Dalton, which is great, there's still going to be some tweaks here and there. Uh, and those tweaks are going to be – you have to be looked at as a, a, a demerit, um, and that's just the reality of it. Now, because of that, a lot of the mistakes that the Cowboys' defense continually makes, Dak Prescott was able to overcome. Mm-hmm. by way of throwing for 450 yards in three consecutive games and things like that. Now, uh, if Prescott was able to, you know, help the offense clean up those giveaways, then we're not talking about a one and three team. We're, you know, talking about, oh, I'm sorry, not a two or three team. We're talking about maybe three and two team, maybe a four and one team. Four and one. Um, story for another day. But Andy Dalton, he came in, he had a, an error of, of his own, right? Fumbled snap, lost that fumble so now we can't really say just yet that Andy Dalton isn't for some reason joining that fumbleitis you know illness that's going around uh, the Cowboys offense this offense as I stated in the pre-roll it has to play flawless football in order to be a Super Bowl contender does not have to play flawless football to win the NFC East that's that's not what we're talking about here right Cowboys can make the playoffs I believe they will make the playoffs but knowing that the Cowboys offense has to play flawless because their defense I yes the cavalry is on the way uh Leighton Van Der Esch, which we'll get to in a moment uh is expected to return barring a setback uh Randy Gregory is a week away um Sean Lee and Shinobi Wuzier, there's still a couple, two, three weeks, maybe even more. But nonetheless, you get some reinforcements back. But unless the Cowboys offense really, really galvan, I'm sorry, defense really, really galvanizes, I don't see them completely flipping from worse to a top five defense over the next, right. you know, two or three months. So now if let's fast forward to, to January, Katie, we're in January. And yes, the Cowboys are in the playoffs and it's exciting and it's wonderful, but your quarterback is 0-4 in the playoffs, okay? Your defense has been historically and statistically bad for the majority of the season. Mm -hmm. Do you beat Seattle in Seattle? The answer is no. Do you beat Green Bay in Green Bay? The answer is hell no. no. Do you beat New Orleans and New Orleans in the Saints? Maybe in New Orleans because Drew Brees can't yeah, throw like more than four was, times a game you, downfield anymore. <laughs> not not unless it's the fourth quarter, apparently, right? <laughs> um, but okay, so let's put a pin in the Saints. But if you're talking about a team like Seattle, you're talking about a team like Green Bay. Are you beating those teams? And let's say you know because it's football any given Sunday, right? Let's say you get past a Seattle. Let's say you get past a Green Bay. What, what what do you got for the Chiefs and the Ravens? Nothing. So um, when you talk about when you talk about it in that capacity, I do think the window for the playoffs is still wide open. Uh, window for the Super Bowl is closed, and it would have to be. It's not locked though, but you would have to really pry it open by way of Andy Dalton figuring out how to get his first ever playoff win. And, and then, then his rolling. second ever, right. <laughs> and then his third, right? right? Uh, and and then he needs the help of a defense that couldn't even help Dak Prescott. See, um, so we'll see. Here's the way that I look at it: Andy Dalton in the playoffs has never had an offense array of weaponry like what the Cowboys present him. He's never had that. He he's had AJ Green. That's fair. I have a and then, point for that. But go hold ahead. on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, I, I got you. Go ahead. He he's had AJ Green, but he's never had the compliment. And when he did get the compliment in Tyler Boyd, AJ Green was injured all the time. So he's mm-hmm. never had both at the same time. That's fair. Um what I will say is this the Cowboys skill positions are so good. And we'll we'll get to our player our player power rankings uh, in the second half of the show. If you're listening to the free portion of the show, you're going to miss that. So I apologize for nothing because you should be subscribing say, right we, now. We, we ain't I apologize for nothing for we what you're sorry. going to miss. But you're welcome for this free, uh, you know, filet mignon though. But right. You got to come get the rest of the meal. <laughs> you got, you, you got to come get, come get the rest. Patreon.com slash catch this fade. Go subscribe right now. $3, $10 tier, whatever fits your budget. But, the Cowboys have enough skill position talent that a bus driver quarterback or slightly better than a bus driver, because I, st- I still think Andy Dalton has the ability to be more than just a bus driver. I agree with that. That's enough 
if, big if, gigantic asterisk if, the Cowboys' defense steps up from where it is now. And that starts with the hope that the missing ingredient for the Cowboys over these first five weeks is Leighton Van Der Esch. It starts right there. Mm -hmm. Because if you know anything about defense and how it works, you need to have a best player. And for all that his salary, and, and don't get me wrong, I love Tank Lawrence. And for all that his salary demands that it be Tank Lawrence, Leighton Van Der Esch probably has the key to that throne of being the Cowboys' best defensive player. For all of the offseason change that I've been ragging on Mike Nolan for not being able to adapt once they lost the offseason, the truncated offseason, the offseason work uh, in the spring, the early summer, the short training camp, the no preseason games to work it all out. For all that I've given him grief on that, He's missing the fundamental piece to making it work, and that's the guy that they've been getting ready to call every single defensive play and to get everybody in the right position in Leighton Van Der Esch. So if you can get that guy back, and he's not being rushed back from this collarbone injury, and he's capable of showing you what he showed you in 2018, not what he showed you in 2019, because I think that was a down year for him, even with the injuries, and I... Honestly, I think he was dealing with a neck injury from week one. If you go back and you watch the play, Jeff Heath <laughs> hit him in the first week of the season, and I don't think it was right after that. I think he was suffering the rest of the season. But if you can get back to 2018 Leighton Van Der Esch, and then you can add Randy Gregory to the mix and get a little bit better pass rush than what you've been seeing, and you get the evolution of Trevon Diggs at cornerback as being a CB1, and Shadobe Wouzie can give you anything to improve on what we're getting out of Daryl Worley and Jordan Lewis right now in coverage. Jordan Lewis is an animal in run support. He's hideous in coverage right now. If you can get any improvement in these levels, I don't think the Cowboys can be a great defense, but they can be a good enough defense that if you have a quarterback who's a little bit better than a bus driver and all of these skill position guys, stranger things have happened. Would I bet on them? Hell no. Would I bet against them? Probably not. I'd probably abstain and say it wouldn't shock me if all of these things fell into place. And I just named you a million things that have to fall into place. Exactly. A million things that have to fall into place. But is there a path towards the Cowboys being competitive in the playoffs? I think there is. And if you can be competitive in the playoffs, then you have to say that no matter how slight it is, and you, don't, you normally don't win championships without a high-pedigree quarterback. But we just saw Nick Foles do it. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, we just saw Nick Foles win a championship. Nick Foles is not good. He's not. What, what I so, will say, in, in, in all valid points, and, and I, I agree on all, on all fronts, um, and it's – what you mentioned about LVE is exactly what we talked about on, I believe, last episode might even been the episode before when we were really fading Mike Nolan. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, one of the things that I'm willing to, to it was Mike Nolan and Jalen Smith, but I think it was primarily Jalen Smith. Let me correct Always. <laughs> um, and I said that I think one of Jalen Smith's uh, biggest struggles was uh, that he got moved over to the weak side and the expectation was that LVE would be the Mike. And when LVE went down with the fractured collarbone in week one, okay, well, now there's this whole dynamic, like there's, it created a vortex yep. in the linebacker core where Jalen Smith is now like, okay, so I know what I used to do, but now this is what I'm supposed to do. But what I used to do, I can still kind of do. So let me try to do this and the new stuff. But, but okay, well, Joe Thomas is there, but, but, you know, but, 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 and all these, but, 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 buts create hesitation and it makes him think and overthink. And then he over pursues or under pursues, or he takes this angle and that's the wrong angle, et cetera, et cetera. He's a step behind. And we saw a lot of that corrected um, yeah, in week five yep. against the New York Giants. Um, so it's perfect perfect timing for him that LVE is expected to come back. And as long as he does, then maybe the good times will keep rolling with Jalen Smith. But the fact that you had to name a laundry list of things that have to go correct, yeah, that just goes back to my point. Again, can the Cowboys – 
will they make the playoffs? I, I'd place that bet all day long. Yeah, I believe they will absolutely make the playoffs. Um, will they make the Super Bowl? I don't. I don't see that that happens. And you make up. You make a great point when it comes to Andy Dalton. He's better than a, a bus driver. He's better than a game manager. And we've seen game managers win. You know the Super Bowl. Uh, Nick Foles, Joe Flacco. I mean, the list goes on. The list goes on. It happens. Um, but look at Joe Flacco, for example. Right. He he is one. Um, he's one of the prime examples of a bus driver. Um, with a big arm, but a bus driver, big arm at the time anyway, mm. um, being able to win a Super Bowl. It was predicated upon defense in Baltimore when that yeah. happened. Yeah. And they also had an offensive line that kept him upright. Andy Dalton does not have an offensive line in 2020 go. that's going to keep that's him true. upright. So he has skill positions that are so insanely lethal that could they in and of themselves help uh, make Dalton better when it comes to January? Yes, absolutely true. But then the question becomes, is that tempered by the fact that you have Terrence Steele as one of your tackles? Is that tempered by the fact that Connor Williams is consistently struggling and yet you still he's have him? He's played so much better in the last two weeks, so I, I got to give it, Connor Williams props for how fair. he's played the last two that, weeks. That's fair, fair. But the larger sample size, because that's two out of five, yeah. So the larger sample size says suggests that he's he's struggling, but he is trending in the right direction. So we'll give him, definitely give him credit for that. But it still puts a question mark at your left guard position. OK, so you got a question mark at your left guard position. We both love Tyler Badass. Um, he's going to have some rookie growing pains, but he you know that he, that kid's going to be a stud. Um, but again, that offensive line. You got some questions there. Brandon Knight, like you pointed out in Monday's episode, uh, although he has been looking great. He did not look so great against the Giants. Right. Something for me tells me, and I went back and I looked at that game and I compared it up against the games where he, he took snaps at right tackle. He, he struggles more on the left edge for some reason. Um, I can't necessarily quantify it yet from a it's data footwork. standpoint. It's footwork. It, it is most certainly <laughs> footwork, but here's what I would attribute it to. I think it's, and I, I've, you've seen me mention this on, on Twitter and in um, my columns before when it comes to, something I call reversing the field. Okay. It's, it's not always easy to reverse the field. And I put it in a, a baseball standpoint from a baseball standpoint as a former ball player, I, you know, play football, play basketball, play baseball. But in baseball, I was a, a center fielder and a left fielder. <clears throat> and I used to do right field as needed. The problem is when you're primarily a left fielder and you get your field reversed because skip, wants you to go to right field that day or if you're a right fielder and you get your field reversed because he wants you to go to left it's a different spatial challenge so I think that's what Brandon Knight is up against trying to go between right tackle and left tackle because he might spatially speaking he might mentally be better at right tackle and then when you reverse his field things get discombobulated a bit um those who who play baseball who've studied baseball anyone who's played in the outfield they will tell you readily hey it's it's not easy flipping from left to right field it's not easy flipping from right to left field and i think that same mental uh physiology applies when it comes to left well i'm going to say i know for a fact the same you know physiological uh, uh, physiological response applies when it comes to left tackle versus right tackle. So I think that the Cowboys really need to look at putting Brandon Knight at right tackle. Now that's not going to solve the Terrence Steele issue, but instead of having two guys struggling at the edges, well now you only have one and then you, you just figure out the left. Um, but I bring this full circle back to the Andy Dalton situation. Yes. He's better than a, a bus driver. He's better than a game manager. He has these super lethal um, skill positions, Ezekiel Elliott and, and C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. Doesn't I'm glad have you said it in that order. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said it in that order. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, don't, don't get me started there, sir, because I got, I got smoke for you on that one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let you live for now. But, um, but nonetheless, uh, he doesn't have Blake Jarwin, right? Um, mm -hmm. Dalton Schultz has, has played well at times and he's played poorly at times. So you don't necessarily know what you're going to get from Dalton Schultz just yet on a game in game out basis. I do like um, what they're doing with Blake Bell, as far as getting him more involved in the receiving mm -hmm. game as well. Uh, but 
you know, games are won and lost in the trenches, especially when that game is the Super Bowl. When you're up against uh, a, an elite pass rush, uh, like something like the Packers have and the Smith brothers or something like mm-hmm. that in the NFC championship is, is Terrence is the combination of Terrence Steele at right tackle with Brandon Knight struggling at left tackle. Is that going to stop them from getting after a, a quarterback who's not as mobile or athletic as Dak Prescott and Andy Dalton? Again, can they make the playoffs? Yes. Will they? Yes. Will they make the Super Bowl? Yeah. <laughs> See, and that that is perfect segue for what I wanted to talk about next. No, no. But it's, if it's, you're it's what we do, man. It's what we do. If if you're on if you're listening to the free show, um, unfortunately for you, you're not gonna be around to hear it. Unless you go right now to patreon.com slash catch this fade and subscribe. Three dollar tier gets you every audio every Tuesday and every Friday morning. The ten dollar tier gets you the videos, the pre-roll, the bonus content, the merchandise discounts, everything that you can think of for ten dollars a month. Trust me, you want to be on that tier. But if you can only swing three dollars, we don't leave you out. You can get every single audio episode and get all of this science, all of these mathematics that you need to get, because right now we're going to switch gears and talk about if the Cowboys can make the playoffs and the Cowboys have a chance to be competitive, are they, do they need to be buyers, sellers, or stay put in these next few weeks before the trade deadline? Mm -hmm. So for our people that are already subscribing, stay here right now. We'll be right back to talk about that on this episode, season five, episode 13 of Catch This Fade.